What's up, Internet? Tom Ledeen here one more time, yapping at you. Um, I'm making another, this is another half-toning video, kind of like the last one, but different. Last one was about spot colors, half-toning spot colors. This is about uh, creating half-tone color separations for four-color process printing. Um, I had a piece of art that was just a jillion colors, and I sort of was kicking around the idea of getting it printed on paper, screen printed, and I knew that it would have to be a four-color process print, and I didn't want to pay anyone to do the separations for me, so I thought I'd figure it out. And through trial and error and playing around, I've, I've come up with a process that I'm pretty sure is, is the real deal. And if not, you know, any screen printers or artists who watch this video, if I'm doing something wrong or saying something stupid, leave a comment, let me know. You won't hurt my feelings. It's the only way I'll learn. Um, I'm no expert, but uh, I think this is a pretty cool, this is a pretty cool deal. So, we are going to open a, I'm going to do a photo. I did a Google image search for portrait. I found this person. I think that's... I think that's the spoiled chick from Lost, right? I don't know. I crop it just so we don't have to deal with quite so much junk. Um, yeah, that's cool. All right. So first thing we're going to do this is a this is an RGB file, so we're going to convert it to CMYK. That's the first step. We made it this far. Hooray for us! <clears throat> All right, so over here in the channels uh, palette, we've got our cyan, magenta, yellow, and key, which is black. And we're going to start with that, the black layer. Um, before, when I was first figuring out how to do this, I had, you know, my process had a bunch of extra steps, and I was in a bookstore reading about process printing, and I saw this little blurb about a Photoshop feature that I had never heard of, I had never stumbled across. It's probably been there forever, I just never had a reason to see it. Um, I don't know how old the book was. It didn't seem, yeah, it was probably, I don't know, whatever, it doesn't matter. Anyway, I don't know everything there is to know about Photoshop. I should just stop talking about it. Here we go to channels, uh, the drop down menu, go to split channels, and what that does is it takes your document, your CMYK document, breaks it into four separate documents, one for each color, which is awesome. Now here's our black, and this is what we're going to start with. We're going to turn this black into our destination document, the others will be our source. So once we have this, we're going to go to the image, image drop-down menu, mode, and bitmap. Uh, output, that's just the default resolution of the, your document, that's fine. Uh, Halftone screen. Now. You're going to have to ask your screen printer what mesh, uh, what kind of mesh count he's using. Um, TPI, which is threads per inch on the screen. For four color process, they use higher uh, mesh counts, like 300 ish. Uh, he'll be able to, he or she'll be able to tell you exactly what. If he says 300, um, you would take that mesh count and divide it by three and a half. Oops, fat fingers. 300 divided by 3.5 equals 85.7 blah, 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 blah. So if I were designing this to get printed, I would use something, an ideal frequency would be 85-ish. Uh, That's dots or lines per inch. So uh, half tones, you have to think of it like a square grid. And at 40 right now, it would be 40 dots in that grid. Uh, and then it it perpetuates out, it, it patterns itself out to fill the document or the art, whatever it is. Um, the angle is also very important. Um, black being the darkest color, what they've screen printers and, and artists have determined over the years is that if we were to have a zero angle for black, it would just be the square like this and as it patterns, that would create a, a visual pattern that the, the human eye would pick up, and you don't want that. 
so the best angle for black for the darkest color is 45 degrees. We've already got it set that way. So it tilts it this way and then patterns it out. So we're going to click OK. And there is our, and I left the frequency at 40 just so we could see the dots. You know what? 40 is a little too big. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go back and change that. Image mode, bitmap. I'm not going to go much. Let's 55. All right, that's good. Now we go image mode, grayscale. And this is so we can get rid of the white. Um, double click the layer to make it an active layer, not a background. Uh, if you have, you want to have uh, white selected as your foreground color, go to select color range. And since white is the foreground, it'll default to white. And you can just hit backspace. Wow, burping. I just hit lunch. Sorry. Um, so we've deleted the white. We deselect it. And we're going to move it over here. Uh, first, let, actually, let's change it to CMYK since we're going to be copying other layers in here and applying colors to them. So the next one up is uh, thirsty. This is uh, yellow. So we're going to go through the exact same process: image mode, bitmap, and yellow being the lightest of the four colors. Um, we're going to give it an angle. We're going to leave the frequency the same for all of them. But the angle for um, each of them is going to change. So we don't get them lined up on the same uh, angle because that would create what's called a, a moire pattern. Um, and the human eye picks that up and it's, it's hard to unsee it once you do. And it's really distracting, takes away from the art. So each angle is different. Uh, yellow being the lightest color, we're going to give it an angle of zero. We can't, we have between zero and 90 degrees, which we can use. Um, if we go past 90, then basically, you know, if we go from zero and then do one that's 90, that's the same because it's a square and we'd get a pattern. Um, keeping it square at a zero uh, angle will create a bit of a pattern, uh, but being the light color that yellow is, it's going to be pretty much imperceptible. So once we do that, we go to grayscale, uh, double click the layer, select color range, fine, white, delete, deselect. Now you're going to do a command or control A to select the whole document, copy. You can drag it over, but uh, sometimes getting it lined up if it doesn't snap too correctly is a bummer and you need them lined up perfectly. So then do uh, command V to paste it. Now, this is where it gets fun. Um, this is our yellow layer, so we're going to go to Layer Styles, Color Overlay, select the color picker, click Color Libraries, and take this slider right here all the way to the top, and then click the down arrow two times, and you should show up at your process colors. Um, click Yellow, click OK, click OK, <clears throat> now that's a, just a layer style, it's not really, really there, so we're going to add a new layer and then merge that yellow down onto it to flatten it. And we'll drag that below the black so you can kind of see what's going on. Alright, now we're going to close this yellow, we don't need it anymore, adios yellow. And now we've got magenta. So we go through the same deal, image mode, bitmap, and magenta being the second darkest color after black. Uh, we gave black a 45 degree angle. We want to give magenta an angle that's far enough away from black that they won't interfere and cause a pattern between themselves. So we're going to do 75 for magenta. Image mode grayscale. Double click that. Select your color range. White. Delete. Deselect. Command Control A to copy it all, Co or select it all, copy it all, and paste it. And this is what I say magenta. So we're going to go color overlay again, color libraries, down to magenta. All right. Throw a new layer under it, merge it down, and now we can close this one. All right, so now we've got our cyan. 
image mode bitmap. Cyan is the second lightest color, so we're going to give it an angle of 15, which is relatively close to yellow, but being the two lightest colors, they won't interfere with each other much. We will get a slight, what's called a rosette noir, um, but that's you know, that's, that's actually not that big of a deal. Rosette is the least, uh, uh, the least, uh, the best of the worst in, ter in terms of moir patterns and how the, the human eye sees them. Um, it's considered acceptable, so we'll take it. Image, mode, grayscale. Select, color range, oh, select, color range, white, Delete it. Whoops, I don't want to fill it. Cancel. Delete. What are we doing? Oh, I didn't make it a... See, it's a background layer. There we go. Now delete it. Deselect. Control A. Copy. And paste. Image. Color overlay. I mean, layer, color overlay. Color libraries. Go find cyan. Okay, now we can close this. Now there's no white in CMYK, so I'm going to throw a white layer underneath because chances are you're going to be printing on a base of white, be it paper or a shirt or anything else. Um, C -M -C -M -Y. Okay. The, the, the order here is, uh, like, if, if we throw yellow up here, you know, it, it changes it. Um, really, this doesn't matter at this point. You're going to, you could give this to your printer, and he has enough information here and stuff to make four screens, one of each color, to then do the printing. Um, to get an idea of how it will look roughly order the the layers like this black cyan magenta and yellow if you want to see how it's gonna look on a, a as a print change these color layers to multiply and what that that does is just kind of um, simulates how the ink will lay on top of each other in a real print so that's what it's gonna that's how it'll print now if we zoom out I mean that's that looks like a photo um, we can open up our original here. Zoom out. Now we gotta crop it. Um, so obviously, some of the punch in the colors gets lost, uh, but that's just the nature of you know four color process. But it's pretty damn close. And if you are a an artist who designed t-shirts or anything that was screen printed and you're dealing with spot colors and using half tones and trying to maximize uh, your colors or the effect the you know the, the illusion of color then you'll be able to appreciate how amazing this is um, and if you turn these off and we go one by one it really uh, excuse me, just go away. Lost girl, I don't even know her name. Maggie Grace, that's what it says on the, the file here. W S Maggie Grace portrait. Um, so yeah, black. You know, there's yellow. And they don't look like much by themselves. Kind of cool, but together they. Uh, it's magic. I mean, that that is a photo right there, and it's four colors, half tones. I think it's awesome. I'm super excited about it. I can't wait to, you know, start designing my next T-shirt and give it a real painterly effect, and maybe not worry about colors at all. See if I can get one uh, printed with the four color process, because I think it's pretty cool. All right, that's all I have for you guys. Play around with it. Let me know if I if I am dead wrong. Um, it wouldn't be the first time.
Uh, all right. Take care of yourselves. Eat well. Get a good night's sleep. Adios.